English 351651, Orsworth and his circle. In this mini lecture, the fifth, I'm going to be discussing Hazlitt's Tour de Force essay, The Indian Jugglers from 1821. I want to focus on three uh, qualities of this essay. There are certainly more um, powerful literary elements in this essay than three, and certainly that is true of the other Hazlitt essays I've been discussing as well. I'm simply focusing on the elements of those essays, the literary techniques of those essays that I find most salient. And here um, I'll be focusing on the three um, elements of the Indian jugglers that I find most salient. First, paradox. Um, the basic paradox running through the essay is that a physical feat, juggling, is somehow superior to an intellectual feat, writing an essay. Uh, this paradox is quite striking because of course the essay itself um, based on this measure is a failure and the fact that the essay conveys this information successfully means it is also a success. So there's this interesting interplay between success and failure in the essay. For the first part of the essay, uh, there's a sense that the physical, physical grace, physical aptitude is better than intellectual aptitude, which means what? That the essay we're reading is not worth very much. But then halfway through, Hazlitt shifts and suggests that Artistic aptitude, which would include literary aptitude, is actually superior to uh, physical grace. So now with this new standard of measure, the essay is a success. So the essay is both a success and a failure at the same time. And Hazlitt captures this paradox throughout the essay in several ways, uh, sometimes in one sentence paradoxes, such as um, we find on page 119 in this Penguin edition of Hazlitt's essays that I'm reading from, where Hazlitt says, um, it, Indian juggling, it is the work of witchcraft and yet sport for children. So what seems to be a mere trifle, uh, a circus trick if you will, uh, is also powerful magic at the same time. Uh, Paradox, of course, is different from an antithesis. Uh, antithesis uh, opposes two elements or ideas to one another. A paradox is a seeming contradiction that can be reconciled on a deeper level. So, the second part of this essay that's connected to the first, I should say the second element I want to focus on in this essay, is connected to paradox, and that is reversal. Uh, we've seen this in other Hazlitt essays, uh, primarily um, in On the Pleasure of Hating, where uh, Hazlitt is constantly uh, reversing or undercutting um, expectations we might have about hatred and love. Here, um, as I said earlier, the first part of the essay seems to be an all-out celebration of physical virtuosity at the, extent, at, at the expense of intellectual aptitude. Um, at one point Hazlitt says, uh, I'm ashamed when I watch physical aptitude like beautiful Indian juggling or rope dancing. Um, I feel inferior, I feel small, I'm embarrassed. All I can do is write an essay, uh, which is easy compared to these tremendous, almost miraculous feats of physical grace. But then halfway through the essay, uh, there's, a, there's an abrupt shift, um, and the, the terms are reversed entirely. And now suddenly we realize that the essay itself, um, as a, a subset of artistic virtuosity, um, artistic genius, is far superior to juggling or any physical feat. Why? Because the master juggler simply has to imitate himself over and over again with his practice, whereas the artist, and um, by extension the essay writer, has to imitate nature itself, which is almost impossible, if not impossible, to imitate. And the striving to do that requires 
a gusto, an imaginative power that far surpasses the physical prowess of the Indian juggler. So this leads to a third um, primary quality running throughout this essay. And again, it is related to what I just described, and that is irony. Uh, throughout the piece, Hazlitt undercuts expectations. In an essay, we would not expect an essay writer to say that the essay as a genre is no good, but that's exactly what Hazlitt does. Um, but then just as he does that, and we expect him to continue to celebrate the physical over the intellectual, uh, he changes directions and celebrates the intellectual or, or artistic over the physical. Um, one other way that Hazlitt practices irony in this piece um, occurs um, fairly early in the essay where in describing the virtuosity of the Indian juggler in such a way as to suggest that juggling is superior to writing, he uses such powerful, lithe, pliable, uh, literary language that we see very clearly that writing can of course be just as um, much of a virtuoso performance as juggling. Here's the sentence I'm referring to. It's a rather lengthy one, but get how Hazlitt's trying to capture the rhythm of juggling in language just as in the fight he tries to capture the rhythm of the boxing match in language. To catch four balls in succession in less than a second of time and deliver them back again so as to return with seeming consciousness to the hand again, to make them revolve round him at certain intervals, like the planets in their spheres, to make them chase one another like sparkles of fire, or shoot up like flowers or meteors, to throw um, them behind his back and twine them around his neck like ribbons or like serpents, to do what appears an impossibility and to do it all with ease, the grace, carelessness, all of that imaginable, to laugh at, to play with the glittering mockeries, to follow them with his eye as if he could fascinate them with its lambent fire, or as if he had only to see that they kept time with the music on the stage. There is something in all this which he who does not admire may be quite sure he never really admired anything in the whole course of his life. I muddled um, the syntax a little bit uh, midway through that passage. You'll, you'll see that when you read the passage yourself. But the syntax, the diction, uh, the rhythm, the, the similes uh, make us feel as if Hazlitt, with his words, is juggling um, in the same way that the Indian juggler might juggle whatever he chooses to juggle. So that is Hazlitt's The Indian Jugglers.